Hey, welcome back to the channel, my fellow weather junkies. I'm your host, meteorologist Greg Majeski, your trusted weather source here with a special update on the potential severe weather that we're expecting heading into this upcoming Sunday and Monday. And boy, we're talking about a big one here, stretching all the way from the Great Lakes all the way down into the deep south. So how bad do we think it will be? Who will be impacted the most? And when will it clear on out of here? We're going to get into all the details on this report but before we get going first i do want to say thank you to the new subscribers and if you'd like to make this information as part of your regular youtube feed all you got to do is please hit that subscribe button in that little right hand corner hit that notification bell so you're alerted on future content and if you appreciate the support please give me a thumbs up leave a comment down below it does help a little bit with the almighty youtube algorithm with that said let's go ahead and take a look at the latest from the storm prediction center so let's begin first, my friends, by taking a look at the SPC day one. We're going to take you through Friday, building up into going into Sunday and Monday and kind of see how things begin to change across the country. Now, for your Friday, we got a couple of pockets to look at. They're marginal. We're talking about from Wisconsin back over to Nebraska and another area here along the Gulf Coast from Louisiana down through Texas. That'll be watched closely for today. Tornado risk looking pretty low, predominantly right around the Gulf Coast. We did have a few there yesterday with a few tornado warnings in Texas, and we may see a few again here for today. What about day two? Let's go check out your day two outlook going into your Saturday. We do have a pocket of slight risk going in across Missouri and Kansas and parts of Oklahoma into that zone. We do have a marginal stretching from Illinois back down through Texas as we watch the first evolution of this storm system beginning to come together. Again, we'll break down the categories on this one as well. There's a pocket of tornado risk with this relatively low, running about 2% here into that zone. And then we're going to look at a higher risk, obviously, for wind covering there into the brown. So we're talking about a 5% risk there running from Iowa, stretching back toward Texas once again. And how about the hail threat? Oh, I think that's going to be up a little bit higher. And you see a little bullseye right there uh, growing in yellow, about 15% from Missouri uh, into Kansas and in through portions of Oklahoma. So let's go ahead and step up into day three. That's the big day. That's when things really get going here on this. And we see a very large area. This is a very large area being impacted here. We're talking millions of people here from the Great Lakes all the way down in toward Texas and the Gulf Coast. You see that slight risk there in the yellow. And we have that enhanced area here in the middle. So we don't have the category breakdown for this just yet. But the way that things are beginning to develop with this system, I think it's going to be driven more for uh, individual strong thunderstorms with hailers and strong gusty winds. And I think the tornado risk will still be there, but not as widespread. We're not comparing this system with one we had a couple of weeks ago. But even if we only have a dozen tornadoes and we don't have 100, if that one finds your house, obviously it's a big deal. So we're going to have to watch the, the how this storm system progresses and develops as we go into Sunday and Monday. And taking this over into your day four outlook, uh, we can see this is going to progress off toward the east and into areas of the deep south and the mid-Atlantic. There you kind of see, look at those sizes. And once again, from the northeast all the way down into Louisiana, Florida, a very large area being covered here for that severe weather risk as we go into your Monday. So we got a lot to get into, and I want to try to explain to you why this system's a little bit different than what we saw in the last one. We're going to look at the ingredients that are coming together to set off the severe weather. So let's go check out the model there. So we're going to begin over here at the weather wall. And one thing I want you to pay attention to, we're looking at the upper level winds. A couple things I look at for severe weather. We're looking at the upper level winds and we're looking at the instability that's known as CAPE. That's kind of gasoline for the fire. So what we're going to be looking at first are the winds. And I want you to pay attention to the, how the wind flow is configured with this system. This is going out towards Sunday evening. It's mostly a west to east. So a slight trough in here, just a little bit. You can see the higher wind energy here across portions of Missouri, for example but it's not an amplified pattern. We're not seeing something that's doing this, something like this, doing a big diving action. That's what we had a couple of weeks ago. When we had a major tornado outbreak. So with this particular system, the way it's looking in the configuration of the main jet stream and the winds aloft, it does not support a major tornado outbreak. Not to say we're, we're not gonna see any, that's still a possibility because we're going to have some very warm, moist air uh, out ahead of this system as this thing kind of slams into that, uh, that gasoline and fires up those thunderstorms. So uh, we're going to be taking a look at this wind energy first, and then we're going to look at the instability. OK, so let's go ahead and let me sit down over here and we'll go ahead and take you through this here for this upcoming uh, storm. So here we go. We're going to back this up a little bit. We're going to show you once again. Watch that timestamp there in that upper right hand corner as we kind of watch this configuration of this energy come on in here. So we're going to see it strengthen here going into Sunday night and Monday here across uh, uh, areas of the Mid-South. 
as this begins to move on in, especially going into Tennessee and things like that. So it kind of really invigorates. Going into Monday, you notice the jet energy here uh, getting a little strong here across the southeast. But again, it's a west-east flow, so we're not seeing that that wind shear, that changing winds with heights that's going to be with this as this kind of slams on in here. Uh, with the different heights. So uh, that's what we're seeing with this first system. Now, the one behind this one going a little bit later into the week here, uh, notice it's a little bit uh, more amplified. So we got a little bit of a twist here, uh, motion here. Uh, it's going to look out going into Wednesday. So we're going to have to watch for more potential severe weather later in the week going for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday with that next system. So you can clearly see the difference between this configuration and then what we're seeing here for this, this upcoming one. Little, the energy is not quite as strong. And it's more zonal where this one becomes a little more configured. You see in that ridging taking place here out ahead of it here a little bit. So we'll have to watch a little bit later for some additional severe weather going into Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday as this pushes us off toward the east. So we're going to kind of focus here on the next seven days. So let's look at the other component here. Again, we're talking about the instability. What is instability? That is heat, okay? The light of the air mass, the easier it is to get that column air to rise to support thunderstorms and severe thunderstorms. So what I think we're going to see here is a very large area with isolated severe thunderstorms that potentially can pulse up severe, drop some pretty large hail because we can get higher into the atmosphere because the air is lighter, and some strong gusty winds with some isolated tornadoes, okay? So as we go ahead and take a look at where we're seeing, this is a snapshot look here at your Sunday afternoon, about four o'clock. Look at how high the levels are here across Missouri and into the deep south. So the air is very, very juicy, very buoyant. We're going a little bit closer here. I'll go into the central region here. And you can get an example. We've got readings down here in southern Missouri over 2,000. That is very high. So again, it is octane, folks. It's something that will support these thunderstorms uh, very well. Very, very juicy air, especially on the Gulf Coast, especially. Uh, but that's the one thing we did not have a whole lot of with that last storm. So you can get storm severe weather with just instability. You can get it with just dynamics. But when you get them both aligned up, you can get, really get some very, uh, very strong dynamic systems. So this moves on off toward the east. Let me go back to the national look here again as this uh, dynamics pushes us off. And this is going into your Monday. So we got some pretty good still holding on some instability here across the southeast. That's probably where the stronger storms will be going into your Monday uh, afternoon and this squeezes on off and heads on out as we go into Tuesday. So that that, that kind of uh, settles things down. Then it'll come back at us again. Look at it, it surges once again going into Wednesday. Again, we'll have to watch for that next system a little bit later in the week going into our Wednesday and Thursday uh, as we've got some additional severe weather, I think, uh, a little bit later in the week as well. But we're focusing on this big one here for this upcoming weekend. So we're going to look at what we call the K-Index and the K-index is basically, it takes different uh, different uh, features in the atmosphere as far as the model data and say, okay, where is the best place for thunderstorms going to fire up here? So as we look at the K-index here, as we take this forward and in, in throughout your Saturday, obviously we're going to have some storms here across the southeast. We're going to watch for this area here specifically across Kansas. Looks like Saturday night. Looks like we'll see some pretty good storms there fire up. Boom, there it is going into Saturday night into Sunday. That's where that slight risk pocket was firing up with those initial storms going Saturday night and into Sunday morning. And that pushes off toward the east. And you see the storms here uh, lining up pretty good here as we go in towards your Monday morning here from the Midwest down into the southeast. So we're going to have a, a line of thunderstorms. We'll be looking for the individual supercells out ahead of any squall line there. Again, the atmosphere is going to be plenty juicy. And this pushes on off toward the east as we go into your Monday night and into Tuesday, things begin to settle down. And then we'll watch again, again later in the week. We'll see if we get some more severe weather uh, here firing up as we go toward Wednesday and Thursday. So you can see it once again. We've got a couple rounds we've got to watch. But again, we're kind of focusing here on this upcoming one. So we're going to be looking at the high resolution model data here. Let me back this one up again for you here. Uh, as we're looking at the short term, it's going to take you to about midnight going into early Sunday morning here. So as we go forward again throughout the day here on your Friday, we're going to be rainy and wet here along the uh, Texas Gulf Coast. You see this in Louisiana, some rains there. Obviously, you got some rains here across the Pacific Northwest and a little rainy weather here across portions of the Great Lakes. We're going to watch in here, especially for those thunderstorms to develop as we go into your uh going into your Saturday night and Sunday morning. So again, kind of watching as we're watching this energy from the Pacific Northwest come into the Intermountain region, kind of kick out here into the plains as we go into this upcoming weekend. That's what's going to initially fire off those thunderstorms. So here they come right there. There we go. So we're talking about 7, 8, 9 o'clock here going into Saturday night. This will be our initial storms here starting to fire up for that severe uh, risk. And that'll begin to push off toward the east. So we're talking Kansas, Missouri, into can into Iowa uh, going in towards your Sunday into Kansas obviously so this will be our initial severe weather 
outbreak here going from Saturday into Sunday that will become more robust as that system begins to push further and further off toward the east. So let's go ahead and take this further. We're going to look out here for the, the next seven days here. Again, here is the European configuration with a 999 low. Here is where our initial severe weather is going to be. We've got, again, a pretty good flow of some uh, very moist air coming in out of the Gulf of Mexico uh, as it charges into this. So we got that very fast moving west to east flow. And watch the thunderstorms here settle up as we go in throughout the day, uh, going into your Sunday afternoon and into Sunday night. So we'll be watching this area here for that severe weather. Again, pockets of severe weather here and there, especially in that enhanced area that we showed you. And this will push off toward the east as we go in toward the day on Monday. So as by the time we go into Monday afternoon, obviously, we're talking about the, the east coast all the way down into the southeast as those storms begin to slowly clear on out. And that'll push on out off the sea. Tuesday's looking pretty good. We get a little bit of a break, but then we got to wait for this next storm system. This is 985. It's a little bit stronger on going into Tuesday. And then going into the middle of the week, we'll have to watch for yet another round of severe weather here uh, going into late in the day on Wednesday here. And I think the tornado risk for this next system appears to be a little bit higher. As, you as I just showed you, the comparison with the jet energy is a little bit different. And we definitely have, uh, we have better wind energy and we have better instability with the follow-on system. So we're going to get through the weekend first and then we'll have to watch another system back behind this uh, in response to this next system kicking on out. Now, with that said, I do want to take a look at the latest from the Climate Prediction Center that's going to take us out for the next two weeks. And I want to explain to you why I feel we're going to continue to see this pattern continue into the middle of April and more severe weather. So, you know, spring is literally a battleground. It's where we're saying goodbye to the cold weather. We're bringing in the warmer weather and we're getting those the clashes. That's when we get the severe weather to really kind of erupt. So what we're seeing here with the Climate Prediction Center outlook going from days 6 through 10 is warmer weather here in the east and continue a colder weather here in the west. And as storm systems come out of the west, it slams some of that cold air into that warmer air, and we're continuing that threat for thunderstorms and potential severe weather. So based off what we're seeing here from the six to 10 day outlook, and even going out to day to 814, colder here in the west, warmer here in the east with these occasional invasions pushing in from west to east, I see a very active severe weather pattern that's gonna continue straight in at least through the 10th of April under the current configuration. That means a very active flow. You notice a lot of the country here uh, from the 2nd to the 6th seeing above normal precipitation with these storm systems coming out of the West Coast. And then we're gonna watch the severe weather erupt with these storm systems, especially across the deep South and going into the Midwest. I think that continues uh, from the 2nd to the 6th and looking here across the deep South going from the 4th to the 10th, seeing uh, above average precipitation here across portions of Texas up in toward Tennessee. So, the pattern overall, based off what the Climate Prediction Center is looking at and the latest uh, European data is showing, is a very progressive flow. We're going to continue to see these amplitudes with these low pressure systems kind of kicking on out. And the severe weather action is going to continue. April is the heart of severe weather season. And boy, is it sure looking like it's going to live up to that reputation. But we got to get through this upcoming weekend for uh, first. So make sure that you guys stay weather aware for the weekend. If you do not have one of these weather radios, highly recommended, especially for those nighttime thunderstorms. Uh, definitely come in handy there. Make sure you have that. Make sure you have the latest weather app up on your phone. Make sure you go ahead and stand up on the latest with that as well and uh, make sure you stay on top of what's going on. Again, uh, we're kind of rehash once again. We're expecting a pretty substantial, very large area of severe weather of potential. I'm not expecting a major tornado outbreak. We're still gonna see some. They're gonna the cards, but we're not expecting like 100 plus tornadoes like we had with the last event a couple weeks ago. But again, if one hits your neighborhood, you're not gonna care that other people didn't see it. So again, rehashing those cities once again for that enhanced area, we're talking Frankfurt, we're talking Bowling Green, Clarksville, Memphis, uh, we're heading down uh, into Louisville, Indianapolis. Uh, those areas there in the orange are the areas that are under concern here. And of course, that'll begin to move off toward the east. And we're talking anywhere from the, the northeast into New Jersey, all the way down into Florida. Uh, we'll get it as we go deeper in the day on Monday to get to this first round. And then as I just showed you, we got another round to deal with a little bit later in the week. So if you'd like to stay on top of these updates and get them a regular a part of your YouTube feed, again, I like to give it to you straight. I don't like hyping these storms to death because it kind of a crying wolf syndrome can kind of settle in a little bit. And boy, do we get a lot of that out there in the YouTube universe. If you want to get it straight from a meteorologist, somebody who has been doing this for a long time, I invite you to please subscribe to the channel. Please hit that notification bell so you're alerted on future content. And if you appreciate what you see, if you got any weather-related questions or you got a comment, please post it down below. I'd be more than happy to answer your questions. 
All right, that's y'all's update for now. Again, we'll be watching this closely through the weekend. We will be doing some live coverage of this as we get a little bit closer to it, although I know we get drowned out by the bigger channels. Eh, we still try a little bit here. All right, that's your update for now. You guys take it easy, be good, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. You guys have a great weekend. Bye-bye.